Hi, y'all. This is going to be the first video in a series I'm going to call Ask an American or something like that, where I talk about America, what it's like to be an American from the perspective of an American. I'm not going to ignore any of the bad parts about America because we have them like every other country, but I'm also not going to ignore the good parts about America, which seems to be very fashionable among a certain class of people these days, though it's nothing new. It's been going on for a long while. At the end of this video, I'm going to put a uh, put up something from Gordon Sinclair, a Canadian journalist from the early 1970s, who refers to uh, Americans as possibly the least appreciated and most generous people on the planet, which is true. Uh, so anyway, the further left a person is, the likelier they are to perpetuate the lie that America is just hated around the world. These are the some of the most annoying kinds of Americans. The I hate America, but I like to pretend that I love America, so I'll say I love America by pointing out how much I hate America and how much the whole world hates the United States. Uh, so Secular Talk did one such video from January of this year. Take it away. So I want to talk about an issue that, as far as I know, nobody in American media and no politicians are talking about this. It's the issue of how we are perceived around the world. This guy talks about social issues and political issues and doesn't seem to listen to any people in America uh, to include her politicians. How we are viewed around the world is not a new topic that people are just discovering uh, you know, in election cycles. It is in Capitol Hill meeting, you know, Senate hearings, uh, House, of, House uh, hearings all the time. The, the view of America that the rest of the world has. So uh, it's really strange for a guy who likes to talk about political issues to be completely ignorant about what our politicians talk about. But uh, keep going. Specifically talking about Americans. And I think your average American probably just doesn't think about this ever. And people who do think about it usually come to the conclusion that uh, we are noble and anointed and everybody loves us for keeping the world safe and being the world policeman uh, I don't think people thinks that uh, I don't think anybody thinks that everyone loves us or whatever uh, but Americans typically do seem to think that uh, people around the world by and large really like the United States and that happens to be true but I'm fortunate enough on this show to have a, a lot of people who listen to the show in other countries. There are people from the UK and Australia and Canada. Those are the bigger ones that I have the biggest audience in in those countries. But I also get people who watch it uh, in the Middle East. and uh, Yeah, I happen to be fortunate as an American who's traveled abroad uh, for official business. And I've talked to people. Uh, who aren't self-selecting into my uh, YouTube channel. You know, just people you meet in situ, running around, doing their daily, ordinary things, and just talking to them. And uh, my experience when I go around is generally that people are quite positive on the United States and Americans, though they don't agree with everything that we do, which we shouldn't expect. Uh, that, would be completely unre be, uh, that would be completely unreasonable for anyone to expect that everyone in the world at all times is going to love everything that their country does uh, without any reservations, whatever. There are particular policies the United States has uh, now. There are particular policies it's had, you know, 20 years, it had 20 years ago, 30 years ago that people really despise. And uh, I think they're right to despise them. But uh, the, the fact that they disagree with us on you know, this policy or that policy or this thing or that thing doesn't mean, doesn't remotely suggest that in the aggregate, overall, they're generally pleased with the United States and are really favorable on the United States as a country and on the American people as a, uh, uh, a civilization. You know, there's people in China, so even though I was I was banned there, but there's ways around that. Isn't that hilarious? Like, here I am, I I really don't feel like I'm having too much of an effect, but it's enough of an effect where the Chinese government is like, no, we cannot allow this guy, ban him. So, people are listening all over the place, and I get to hear their perspective. I get to hear the perspective of people who... Who self-select into my YouTube channel and tell me things, and when I'm bashing America, it shouldn't be at all surprising that there is a bunch of people who will get on that bandwagon to bash America with me. Who aren't Americans and aren't very biased as a result of that. They're not biased as a result of being Americans, but that isn't to say that they aren't biased. And if I'm being brutally honest... Brutally honest. The world hates us. 
They do. Not true. And I'm not saying that lightly. And in all seriousness... I, I actually agree with you. You are not lightly telling this bald-faced lie. Uh, it's very deliberate on your part. It pains me to say that. Like, it, no, it breaks doesn't. my heart to say that, because no, I'm as American as it gets, man. You know, born and raised in New York, here in New York right now. This is the old tried-and-true strategy of if you want to stab someone in the back, you need to befriend them first. It makes it easier to get behind them. That's the, the kind of bullshit this guy... That's the shuck and jive this guy is trying to uh, pass along to his audience. You know, as much as I bash the place and I try to fix the place, I do that because I love the place. I mean, I think that you don't care about your country if you're not trying to fix the flaws. So it pains me to say that... To, p to fix the flaws, which I would suppose would be, uh, would, would be a further obligation to want to fix them by saying true things, by saying honest things, by not being a bald-faced liar. We'll get to that in just a moment. But it's true. And it's not just my anecdotal evidence where, you know, I'm talking to people who aren't in America about this. It's also, there's a lot of empirical data to back this up. Just to give one example... There is no empirical data to back up your proposition that the world hates us. The World Independent Network and Gallup International did a poll in 2013 asking 66,000 participants across 65 countries the basic question... Who's the biggest threat to world peace? Which country? Now, uh, here are the results. Pakistan and China, 8% they got. Well, actually, Pakistan, 8%. China, 6%. Iran, Israel, North Korea, and Afghanistan were all tied at 5%. Syria got 3%, and Russia got 2%. The United States got 24%. Oh my God. Nope. The world hates us. Nearly one in four people think we're the biggest threat to world peace. Therefore, the world hates us. That, you may not have noticed, 25%, 24% actually, is not a majority of people. It's a minority of people. It's, it's a super minority of people. One by far. When people think of us, they think biggest threat to world peace by far. So, how? How have we lost our way so much? How have we gotten to this point? We haven't lost our way, and we haven't gotten to this point. A minority of people out there are going to dislike any given country. Um, but any, anyway, the reason that I know this guy is a bald-faced liar is I followed his links where he's reading from this study. So from his own source, down at the bottom, you can read, I'll put a link to it below, quote, The world still sees us mostly favorably, even though we're a big threat to world peace. There is some interesting information that, uh, that, uh, that counters this, though. Many countries have a more favorable, more favorable opinion of us overall now than they did when George W. Bush was our president. Most of Europe sees us favorably, along with much of Asia, including primarily Muslim countries like Indonesia. Pacific countries like Australia have a favorable view of us. Now, he did this video in January of this year. While he was busy saying how much the world hates us, those Gallup people were out there doing polls, like, you know, those Gallup people tend to do. And uh, they put out a study in, uh, or a result of that survey in April, which, which uh, starts off by saying, uh, linked to a news article, starts off by, by saying, quote, Some bash the United States. Some are still part of the Blame America uh, First crowd. But the favorability numbers on the U.S. can't be denied. America is number one on the planet, according to a new massive uh, Gallup poll. There is no country on the planet that is as favorably viewed as the United States, and this has been true for a long time. One of the reasons for this, as I, as I mentioned, they don't agree with us on everything that we do. And one of the reasons, uh, I didn't mention this, but one of the reasons that people will view us as a large threat, some minority people will view us as the largest threat to world peace, world security, is that unlike the other countries you mentioned, except for China, uh, we are very large. The United States is, a, is you know, 20% of the world's economy. Uh, the largest military by far. We're involved in a lot of places. That has a destabilizing effect. And when we, because we are a giant, the United States thinks like a giant and acts like a giant. When we take action, it has bleed over effects that are huge. They are really legion in, in their, their, uh, the, the, their power 
to go beyond what it is we want to do. And we don't always act wisely, and we don't always act benevolently. But one of the things, like Gordon Sinclair was mentioning, why we're the most underappreciated and possibly uh, the most generous, least appreciated and the most generous people on the planet, uh, the reason people view us favorably is because we are the most generous people on the planet by a long shot. No country comes close to rivaling us in, in our generosity. The, uh, the American people in, in charity outgive every other country on the planet in per capita, uh, percent of GDP, raw numbers, you name it, the American people do it. We give in foreign aid and charity almost a half a trillion dollars per year. Uh, if you subtract out of that the, the funds that come from the government for foreign aid, we still give almost a half a trillion dollars in charity and aid to other countries every year. Charity here and aid to other countries. No people on the planet are as generous as the American people are. This is one of the paradoxes of the evil capitalism of the United States. People do covet material wealth. They want things. Um, but that quest for personal enrichment comes with it a social obligation that Americans, like most other people in the world, feel. And the fact that we're able to get rich in this country bleeds over into how generous we are. We have the resources, and most Americans recognize that when you are great, it is incumbent upon you to spread that around. Now, we, you know, different political parties here quibble about how to do that, but the average American, uh, you know, in most of his moods, is quite generous in, fin in uh, finances and resources and with their personal time and their charitable efforts at helping other people. This is, not, this is not mysterious to other people throughout the world. They look at the United States and see what it is we do around the world and see what it is that we do in this country. And for all the talk and the jibber-jabber that you get from uh, people like this who just want to, to get on the bandwagon of people around the world hate us, you cannot get away from the fact that people recognize that the proof is in the pudding and the American people, when it comes to charity, when it comes to defense of liberty and all these things, we put our money, which, of which we have a lot, where our mouth is, again, of which we have a lot. We're, we're a, a very proud nation of the things that we do. One of the things that people say about Americans is that we're very boastful. We are. That's because we're large, we're loud, we're proud. We're not ashamed to be Americans. It's one of the jokes that I say to people. I'm proud to be an American, but when I travel abroad, I'm a Canadian. That's actually not true. I'm very proud to belong to the United States and to be a, a part of having protected this country and, ha and you know, being a part of its fabric that helps make up the greatness that is the United States. When I travel abroad, I am quite keen on people knowing that I'm an American if it comes up. I don't pretend to be a Canadian or to be from any other country because the Canadians aren't held in as high esteem as Americans are. No one is held in as high regard around the world as the United States and her citizens is. It's just true. And for nut jobs, you know, American ba bashing retards like this to propound their utter nonsense is quite frustrating to me. We are proud of what we do. We have every reason to be proud of what it is we do around the world. Not in every case, of course, because like, you know, like a giant, when we act, there are those big bleed-over effects I talked about. That includes the, the stupid shit we do. When we do something stupid, it is not just a little bit stupid. It is calamitous. When we act, it's always big. The charity we do is always big. The harm we inflict when we do bad things is large. I don't run away from this. It's true. We need to face it honestly. And you don't face it honestly by running down the United States and her people by pretending something about us that simply is not true. Mr. Secular Talk... Go fuck yourself. All right, uh, more of these to come. Have a great day. Oh, uh, feel free to ask me questions that like you'd like to get a uh, an average, ordinary, everyday, run-of-the-mill American's uh, perspective on. Happy to do it. Have a great day. The United States dollar took another pounding on German, French, and British exchanges this morning, hitting the lowest point ever known in West Germany. It has declined there by 41% since 1971, and this Canadian thinks it's time to speak up for the Americans as the most generous and possibly the least appreciated people in all the world. As long as 60 years ago, when I first started to read newspapers, I read of floods on the Yellow River in the Yangtze. Well, who rushed in with men and money to help? 
The Americans did, that's who. They have helped control floods on the Nile, the Amazon, the Ganges, and the Niger. Today, the rich bottom land of the Mississippi is underwater, and no foreign land has sent a dollar to help. Germany, Japan, and to a lesser extent, Britain and Italy, were lifted out of the debris of war by the Americans who poured in billions of dollars and forgave other billions in debts. None of those countries is today paying even the interest on its remaining debts to the United States. When the franc was in danger of collapsing in 1956, it was the Americans who propped it up, and their reward was to be insulted and swindled on the streets of Paris. And I was there, I saw that. When uh, distant cities are hit by earthquake, it's the United States that hurries in to help. Managua, Nicaragua is one of the most recent examples. So far this spring, 59 American communities have been flattened by tornadoes. Nobody has helped. The Marshall Plan, the Truman Policy, all pump billions upon billions of dollars into discouraged countries. And now newspapers in those countries are writing about the decadent, war-mongering Americans. Now, I'd like to see just one of those countries that is gloating over the erosion of the United States dollar build its own airplane. Come on now, you, let's hear it. Does any country in the world have a plane to equal the Boeing jumbo jet, the Lockheed TriStar, or the Douglas 10? If so, why don't they fly them? Why do all international lines except Russia fly American planes? Why does no other land on Earth even consider putting a man or a woman on the moon? You talk about Japanese technocracy and you get radios. You talk about German technocracy and you get automobiles. You talk about American technocracy and you find men on the moon, not once but several times and safely home again. You talk about scandals and the Americans put theirs right in the store window for everybody to look at. Even the draft dodgers are not pursued and hounded. They're right here on our streets in Toronto. Most of them, unless they're breaking Canadian laws, are getting American dollars from Ma and Pa at home to spend up here. When the Americans get out of this bind, as they will, who could blame them if they said to hell with the rest of the world? Let somebody else buy the bonds. Let somebody else build or repair foreign dams or design foreign buildings that won't shake apart in earthquakes. When the railways of France and Germany and India were breaking down through age, it was the Americans who rebuilt them. When the Pennsylvania Railroad and the New York Central went broke, nobody loaned them an old caboose. Both of them are still broke. I can name to you 5,000 times when the Americans raced to the help of other people in trouble. Can you name to me even one time when someone else raced to the Americans in trouble. I don't think there was outside help even during the San Francisco earthquake. Our neighbors have faced it alone, and I'm one Canadian who is damn tired of hearing them kicked around. They'll come out of this thing with their flag high, and when they do, they're entitled to thumb their noses at the lands that are gloating over their present troubles. I hope Canada is not one of these. But there are many smug, self-righteous Canadians. And finally, the American Red Cross was told at its 48th annual meeting in New Orleans this morning that it was broke. This year's disaster, with the year less than half over, has taken it all, and nobody, but nobody, has helped.